This theme has been in my work for a very, very long time. Uh, the very first one of these, I think I painted 25 years ago. And actually thinking about it, it's been a, although it's such an odd combination of elements, it's been an extremely successful uh, theme for me. The, the first one of these that I made um, was purchased by a guy called Jake Scott. Um, it hung in a, a bar in Glasgow called Mojo. Jake Scott's one of the, the Scott filmmaking dynasty. I went over to New York and I remember at the time and it was a huge deal for me. One of them um, won the, not the Turner Prize. Um, one of them was purchased by Ewan McGregor. I got, I got my first um, painting from Jared and, um, oh goodness, it was a long time ago now. I was making a film in Glasgow, a film called Young Adam. And I was staying in a hotel where Jared had a lot of his paintings on the wall. And there was this beautiful pictured painting of a bull with a, 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 I don't know, eight or nine year old girl standing with a rope holding the bull through the ring in its nose. And it was a very imposing piece of this large beast and this young, fragile girl. And um, it just it struck me. And I realised by the time I was going to leave Glasgow that I, I didn't want to not be able to see it anymore. So... Um, I got in touch with Gerard and f discovered that it was, in fact, anyway, one thing led to another. He was able to get me the painting and uh, I've enjoyed it ever since. Uh, and this is the most recent one. Um, I decided that I wanted to have another wee look at the theme. It had been a long, long time since I had painted the, the, the previous ones, the original ones, and I felt there was maybe something else I could do with it. So, the labyrinth. Um, it won't surprise you to hear that this exists on lots of levels. Um, level one, what you actually physically see in front of you, the canvas itself, this, this impossible scene, um, this brute of a beast occupying 80% of the canvas and the child um, untroubled in control um, and the, the whole thing does the tension is, is heightened slightly because of the the context because um, this has been placed in a city um, which adds to the kind of uh, the Grimm's fairy tale feel of the thing um, I feel strongly about this I always have that any work of art has to work on this level first and foremost if this doesn't grab you, if this doesn't work, then any hidden meaning, any symbolic content, to, to my mind, it counts for nothing. This piece, um, anywhere I've, I've shown it, it literally acts like a magnet and it draws people in. So level two, um, why would I go to the bother of putting this together? As I say, it, it doesn't take a genius to work out that there is that there are layers within the thing. Let's take there are probably three or four main symbolic elements. The bull itself, unsurprisingly, symbolic of masculinity. The child, symbolic of, of femininity. The city, um, in, its, in itself, is, is in, in this case, I intend it as, a, as an urban wilderness. It's quite stripped back, it's quite grungy. And we have these other nice wee added elements, which, uh, which I'll get to. The point of the painting, uh, the labyrinth, harks back to uh, the, the idea of the, the, the Minotaur. I uh, have a, an ongoing, um, very strong interest in Greek mythology and a lot of the symbolism in Greek mythology. This idea of that brute, lost, lost in the labyrinth, uh, all that raw, masculine power, but directionless. That's 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 the theme here. That's what I'm trying to say. So you have this 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 beast, um, masculinity in all its all its brute primal force, um, politically, on every level, occupying as I say 80 85 percent the canvas. But in the child, we have the civilizing element. All of this power is directionless. You can see that the rope hangs loose in the child's hand. 
the bull's waiting for her to decide where they're going. Um, she's not threatened in any way. She's relaxed, she's comfortable, and she's stopped, and she's gazing straight at us. She's challenging us, if you like. On the wall behind, um, a device I use often, the graffiti itself, the word labyrinth, the word coil, uh, the word entanglement, uh, these are all words which derive from this notion of the labyrinth itself. And the last kind of nice element is the magpies, uh, one for sorrow, two for joy, and in this case, three for a girl. Um, this is received in different ways, I have to say. There are, there are people who come to the house and they're confused by it. Um, some people maybe feel a wee bit threatened by, by the combination. Um, this wee girl, in this case, is my youngest granddaughter. She's actually quite a bit younger in that piece. Um, and I suppose that was maybe one of the spurs that was that's what drove me on to maybe make another one. Emily had come into my life and just at that point uh, she was perfect in terms of uh, this, this notion of femininity, uh, the innocence. Um, and I think you can probably see though, there's <laughs> she's no pushover as our Emily. Um, and that's important, um, the fact that she she's in control. Um, it matters in terms of how this is received.